everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Relationship Entertainment TV. I'm your host, Felicia Dorch, with the news you can use and the ish you don't want to miss. I hope your week is going great. You know, can't believe we're already at Thursday. I was just talking with my twins during homeschool and I was letting them know that their last day of school is on the um, 18th and they'd be out to January the 4th. Cannot believe we're getting ready for Christmas. You know, um, Thanksgiving just passed. We put up our tree on Friday and every time I look at the tree, I'm shocked at how fast this year seemed to have gone. Uh, even though we've been stuck in the house since March, it still seems like it's progressing pretty quickly. I know some of you are saying, no, it hasn't. Come on, 2021. Let's get done with it. Let's, let's see what it brings. I saw something really funny on social media and someone posted that they needed to see the terms and conditions of year 2021 before it came in. I thought that was hilarious because I'm with them. I Can I see the future? I want to know what we're getting because I really believe in that history repeats itself. So I'm worried. I'm like, are we going to have another year of this Corona crap or what? Because in the Spanish flu hung around for a little while, while y'all, I'm just telling you. But let me stop because I'm probably going to get everybody all up in a roar. I wanted to talk to you again about coronavirus and this uh, vaccine. I saw on the news yesterday and it was pretty interesting to me because as I said before, um, that I wasn't sure about it, you know, as being a registered nurse, you know, we see things or we think about things in a different way light from the lay person, you know, from people that don't know the medical field or have the experience that we have dealing with disease and a disease process. Um, so I, I thought it was refreshing though, to hear the Texas Nursing Association say that they're not sure about it either. So, you know, if this is not just me as an RN, this is a ton of people, you know, that are RNs that are saying, and, and really what they're saying that it's, it's rushed. They feel like this vaccine is being rushed. And I said that before, because trust me, I understand. I know people will come back and they will debate with me and say, well, you know, you got the, the MMR vaccine or you got the Tdap vaccine when you were younger, or you got the chicken pox vaccine when you were younger. You tr that's true. However, I wasn't there doing the production of these things. Like I didn't watch it play out in front of me. My parents may have. And back then the public wasn't privy to the information that we are privy to. I can Google something or look it up or go on the Pfizer website or the CDC website and find out any information that I want to find out. Not to mention, I went to school to be a nurse. So we, we researched and we studied disease processes. We, we studied how things are created. That's how I'm able to break it down and tell you how the flu vaccine works, because this is something that I've studied. So I know that all of these vaccines went through a clinical trial period. I know when the measles, the big measles, uh, rubella outbreak, they were pushed to try to get a vaccine. Now I haven't researched, I haven't went and researched how quickly those vaccines came about. Um, so I'm not aware of that. And that's something that I need to do to try to compare to see if the timeline timeline is about the same. Cause it could be that we are nervous, uh, thinking that this is a rushed process and in actuality, maybe it's not compared to how quickly the other vaccinations came out in the past. So that's something that I'm definitely going to look up and, and I think I'm going to bring that back to you, you know, just to kind of give you some education on that and as well as myself. So I can then make a determination as to if I feel like this vaccination is rushed or not. Um, but I kind of think it is because if the entire Texas Nursing Association is agreeing the same thing that it's rushed, there hasn't been enough human trials, then it's something that I'm probably just going to watch. Because uh, as I was telling you on Tuesday that the first set of people that will get this vaccination is most likely going to be the medical people, the medical personnel, because they deal with patients every day. They're on the front lines, you know, so I imagine that it's going to be the uh, medical personnel and then possibly firemen or police officer, police officers, because they're on the front lines. They come in contact with people on the daily basis, uh, especially, you know, in the hospitals and clinics and things of that nature. I also wanted to talk to you about uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. When will it, uh, when will black communities get access to it? Now this um, article 
when I read it, it really made me think about everything that I've been talking to you about when it comes to vaccinations and uh, how quickly it came about and what's the process as how it's going to be administered and rolled out. So one of the things that I was concerned with um, is the way that, as I stated, they're gonna prioritize healthcare workers along with nursing home patients and employees, signaling the first of series of steps in curbing a pandemic. So in the UK, the health official launched for Wednesday announcing that Pfizer's vaccination distribution would begin next week with healthcare workers and nursing facilities also being the first recipients. So it's already in the UK. They've already got their emergency administration certificate. So they're going to begin to vaccinate people in the UK, starting with the healthcare facilities and then people in nursing homes and, um, and the people that care for the nursing home patients. CDC officials hinted the next group to receive the vaccination should be essential workers comprised of 87 million people in America, followed by adults with pre-existing conditions most susceptible, susceptible to infections. However, the New York Times reports the decision on how vaccines roll out will be left up to state health care officials and governors. So the concern is once it get down past all of those other people that I listed, all of those different subgroups, how will it be distributed amongst the people that are not essential workers or the people that just, you know, they're at home. They don't have pre-existing conditions. They're not medical personnel. They're not police officers, you know, things of that nature. They're just people, you know, how will that be rolled out? Okay, the, re the revelation leaves a pin in a conversation around how medical authorities will address distributing, distributing the virus to black communities. Distributing, um, I'm sorry, the virus to black communities disproportionately ravaged by the virus and rightfully cautious due to long held racist practices in medicine. Now that was something that I was like, wow, I think I may dig a little deeper into that because there has been stories, have been stories that I heard about um, certain vaccinations, um, they change them or, and when I say they, the pharmaceutical companies, you know, I don't have proof of this, but it was speculated that they would put things in the vaccinations to sterilize black communities to keep them from having children. That's just a, a theory that I have read about, okay? One in 1,000 black Americans have already died in this pandemic, which means black people are dying at twice the rate of white residents. A new poll found that over one third of black people in America have lost someone to the virus and is now the third leading cause of death, death among black communities. Frontline workers primarily come from black and black and communities of color. So distributing the vaccine to healthcare workers confronts one portion of that scale. Experts at the National Ac Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine propose that distrib distribution could be staged according to zip code, allowing black communities the safety of backlash up for being prioritized while also addressing the needs of low income communities. Now that I understand that, however, if the, let's say the governor decide to select 77015, which you may not be familiar with that, but I am, it's a community uh, city right outside from where I live. Um, I would tend to say that that's primarily black and brown people. So then would you think, okay, they're targeting African Americans and um, or black and brown people, you know, Mexicans, Hispanics, are they targeting us? Why would they hit us first? So I'm not sure that zip code would work as well, depending on which zip code they do first, would give that theory that was spoke about in this article. The healthcare industry is primarily white. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, in 2019, 18.6 million people were working in the field comprised of different titles and functions. 60% were white, while 16% were black. Hispanic healthcare workers made up 13% and Asian workers make, made up 7%. Black and Hispanic healthcare workers made up relatively large shares of AIDS and personal care workers and direct contact support workers. Black and Hispanic workers are also accounted for larger shares of healthcare workers in home health care. And, uh, and Black workers made up relatively large share of workers in skilled nursing facilities and other residential care settings. 
So that makes you makes you think, you know, as how they're going to distribute these uh, vaccinations and not make it look as though that, you know, they are being targeted. But the timing of when Americans can expect to receive a vaccine is indefinite as the FDA advisory committee committee is scheduled to meet on December 10th. So we won't even have, Pfizer is not even scheduled to have their emergency hearing until December 10th to discuss the emergency authorization for Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine. To date, Pfizer claims their vaccine is 95% effective while Moderna reports a 94% effectiveness rate Federal authorities in the state say that they plan to ship the first 6.4 million doses within 24 hours after the FDA approval, which will have be, to be distributed twice to those who receive it. Wow. So that's according to news1.com. That's where I got that article from if you want to go back and read it. And I, I was reading about it because I had... Um, my work eval today and one of the things that my company does which i think is amazing is they send out surveys to collect data to see how you're doing and one of the surveys that i received yesterday was um the parent the, the parental survey so basically what it was was asking questions is how am i doing at home working from home how am i doing with my children being at home how am how am i doing with teaching them and working you know continuing to take care of my family while I do my full time job at home and as i stated to you guys before on one of the broadcasts i'm used to working from home i've done this for a, num a number of years in a previous position um i hadn't been really clinical nursing for quite some time i do it as needed to keep my skills up but i haven't been in the hospitals full time in the last 5 years so working from home and my children being homeschooled is something that's normal for us. They've been doing it for quite some time, even before the pandemic. But one of the questions on there was asking about the vaccine. I'm considered high risk because I do have some underlying conditions. And I, I told my manager that I wasn't sure that that would be something that I would do. And I was kind of shocked because I kind of have a feeling that when the vaccine is readily available, that the people that are not normally working from home, because mind you, we started working from home in March. My previous position, I worked from home. Other than that, the last four years, I've been driving back and forth, you know, to my office downtown. And I kind of have this feeling that it's going to be with one of those things where either you take the vaccination or find another job. And I believe that's how this is going to play out. So this is why I want to bring as much information to you about the vaccination. I want to give you some of the things that people are talking about with the vaccination to kind of help you figure things out going forward. Um, just as with public schools, they have some families that don't vaccinate at all. And some families are not able to send their kids to public school. They have to find other ways to educate them because the public school will not allow them in the school unless they can get some type of document saying that it's against their religious beliefs which now they're even testing that theory. You know, they're saying, well, we'll prove it, you know, or give me some type of other documentation for your child to attend here. So I kind of have a feeling, I really believe that this is how it's going to go. So I'm going to continue doing my research. I'm going to continue bringing it to you so you can make an informed decision um, that's best for you and your family. So I thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a fabulous ending to your week. And thank you for tuning in to Relationship Entertainment TV. Again, I'm your host, Felicia Dorch, with the news you can use and the ish you don't want to miss. I'll see you next Tuesday. Music